The barbed devils were defeated, and the friends approached a lone Durgar, canting a spell and opening a portal from this plane. Not knowing to whence the portal led, the party decided to take their chances and found themselves in a dusty, man-made, but familiar underground dungeon. That's it. That's actually all I had today. <laughs> it's like the shortest <laughs> intro ever. <laughs> Welcome back to New Delancey, our Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition campaign. I'm your DM. I, I almost said Commander VG Punks, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Uh, we have some new stuff, so just some new uh, quick announcements. Uh, everybody, check out the D&D Beyond widget over on the side. And if you couldn't tell, we have totally made the jump over to Foundry Virtual Tabletop, which I'm very, very excited about. So we'll be using a combination of Foundry and D&D uh, Beyond from here on, um, which will be, uh, which I, I think is working out pretty well so far. Pretty cool. Um, Hope you guys enjoy it, but please be patient as we are all learning this new system. Um, so there will probably be a few hiccups, um, but nothing we can't handle, eh? Um, all right, so uh, let's get down to business, shall we? In the last session, you guys had crossed through a portal um, from the, uh, well, the Nine Hells, and uh, wound up in a familiar place let's see if that let's see how that loads for you folks oh so cool so cool uh huh marty yes i did so you're in the same spot that you were in last session you should be uh, I'm just going to make sure that, oh, okay, actually it is, everything looks like it's yeah. working. Can everybody see the screen? Yep. Excellent. Excellent. All right, everyone. So, um, you guys had just crossed into, um, back into the material plane. Um, so, and back into this, uh, very familiar dungeon, um, um, for those of you who were with us during this, uh, you remember this is the dungeon that uh, a certain halfling uh, had led you to uh, that was under the effects of Ian Fear's charm spell at the time. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, hand it to you guys. Uh, wow, you know, I don't actually know how we're going to do a roll... Um, do like a turntable. I wonder if there's a way to do that. <laughs> this would have been one of those nice things to have like figured out before we started, but <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Um, I will totally have a, uh, a note prepared for this. Uh, one moment. So let's do turn table. Turn order. That's neat. What's that? So, I was looking at that macro thing you were talking about where we don't necessarily have to set it up, but, I mean, we can technically just macro roles for, you know, abilities and whatnot. Uh, well, remember, we're making our roles in D&D Beyond, so yeah, uh, no need to roll here in, uh, uh, here in Foundry. Uh, cool. Um, so, let me see. Actually, I'll leave it up to you guys. Do you want to... What, do you think you, you guys would rather have, like, one sort of master turn where everybody kind of takes an action, or would you rather have a turn order at this point? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm willing to go with what the group decides right now. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down with whatever, to be honest. Let's go ahead and do a turn order. Um, I would like everyone to please roll an initi uh, initiative. Roll in a net. Uh, which you should be able to do by clicking on your initiatives modifier on your character sheet. Thank you, Maustein, for your subscription. You're amazing. Seeing a... 
Tess, I don't think that got your initiative modifier. What's your modifier? On I your clicked initiative? on the modifier. It says plus two. Oh, oh wait. Oh, I see it. I see it. You, you. I was looking at the one above it that said custom roll. My bad. No, my no, my custom roll was a test earlier. Sorry. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. No. no, that's that's my fault. Uh, so let's see. I have on the board right now. Serene, are you having trouble finding your initiative? It looks like hers is posted into the Foundry chat. Ah, okay. I just clicked on it. I wasn't sure how I was supposed to do that. That'll be in uh, D and D Beyond, actually, but that's okay. We can take that role. Uh, okay. So let's yeah, you want to have that. either the app open for D and D Beyond on your phone, or you can open up a separate tab. Okay, I have the app on my phone, so I'll just use that from now on. Yeah. Just adding the uh, turn order real quick. A moment. Cool. Uh, I've got our turn order. Excellent. All right, Serene, it's starting with you. Okay. Okay, so I guess um, I want to investigate. I don't think we investigated this room, correct? Uh, oh, you kind of did. Okay, we did. All right. So I guess, and I'm a little, so I'm, a, I'm afraid of moving too far ahead. So... How do I how do I ping the thing? Did we come from this way? Um, so you can't really ping, but there's a little pen. There should be a little pencil tool on the side, I think, that'll let you draw. There's like a ruler, and then there's like a select targets. Mhm. Mm uh, you can use the ruler, I think, and that will sort of let you kind of draw out on the field. Oh, I see. So did we come from this way? Yes, that's where you came from. Okay, so we're going this way. Correct. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, so I am just going to move to here. Eh. Meh. How do I... Um, over on the left side, um, mm -hmm. you, the little tool thing, press on, like, basic controls. And then the little, like, you see the little silhouette... Yeah, yeah, the click, person. Yeah, click on that, and that should allow you to move by clicking and dragging yourself. There we go. Yeah. All right. Okay, figured so that out. Curve. Yeah. Cool. Cool. We'll I'll just stay there. Awesome. Hmm. Serene from around the corner. Um, you think you can hear what sounds like talking. Can I make yeah. out any words? Uh, only bits and pieces, but nothing coherent. Okay. They sound like sort of, um, it sounds like sort of a deep kind of guttural speaking. Okay, so I'm going to look over at Ian Fear and let him know that um, there might be someone there in a whisper, like, there might be someone around the corner. And that's my turn. All right. Rack, you're up next. All right. And I heard the whisper. Um, not from where you're at, no. Uh, you did hear her uh, mention that there might be someone around the corner just now. Okay. All right, I will uh, go ahead and move up and take a look around the corner then around the corner a torch burns on the wall as you approach this corner you too can now hear the talking coming from um, from that direction I, I don't know why that was a text box but hey we got a text box <laughs> coming from this way <laughs> All right, I take two more steps forward, and okay, so now I can see that angle. All right, 
I'll hold my position here <clears throat> and just right. do it. Try to try to see if I can't make anything out more now. Like, is it a language I recognize, or is it still go, too hard to hear? Go ahead and roll a perception check, please. Okay. Sixteen. Sixteen. With a sixteen, um, you can make out that the um, it sounds like common and something is kind of being discussed. Um, let me see. What else could you hear from right here? Seriously, where did I put that? Oh, there it is. Uh, so right now, uh, you hear, uh, like I mentioned, this kind of low, um, sort of guttural speaking. It's common. Um, you hear mention of, uh, uh, of the word business uh, and job. Uh, but that's about all you can make out from this distance. Okay, I uh... sort of an echo in this uh, in this area that makes it kind of hard to make out. You'll need to get a little closer. All right. At this point, uh, I'm just going to ready my shield and my warhammer and hold position until the rest of the group either catches up or I feel like it's safe to move forward again. Awesome. In fear. Your turn. All right. Um, well, now that our giant friend has decided to make his move. Oops. Let's go about following behind. right here all right you two can now uh, make out the talking in the distance it's very echoey and difficult to make out all right um let me see if i remember this right i think last time when we came through here i went in the upper path Hmm. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna lean close to Wreck and say, "Hey, we've been here through here before. The uh, the path above uh, the path to our left is uh, kind of spiky." What was that last bit? Music kind of overtook that last word. I'm going to say the path uh, to our left is a bit spiky. Okay. It sounds like it's coming from the right, though. And I think that'll be my turn. All right. Val Phelan's going to make his move. Uh, Valphalen actually is going to roll a stealth check. Try sneaking. This is a disadvantage roll. All right, we rolled a six on that. Let's move. Okay, that's going to be my move. Tess, that brings us to you. Um, let's see. I'm 
trying to follow in Val's footsteps, she will try her best to stealth. Like I rolled a 21 on that despite being at disadvantage. Tess is just going to tiptoe along the way. Oh, wait, hold on. One wall is in the way. Move here and move here. Awesome. Serene, you see Val and Tess creeping up behind you. Tess waves at Serene. Serene Stealth waves wave. back. <laughs> A stealthy wave. I'll hang back. My armor is very loud, says Val. Same with Tess, and she, str she shrugs a little bit. All right, that brings us back to Serene. You're up next. Okay. So Serene is going to, let me see. Move up past Anfear. Oh. oh, not past Anfear. Um, just behind them. Don't want to get too ahead of myself. So just behind them. All right. And Wreck that's that. my turn. Wreck, that brings us to you. All right, at this point. Uh, Rex going to try to move forward stealthily, but I have disadvantage on it. So uh, do I do the check twice or is it going to automatically? Uh, do the check twice, I believe. Okay. First stealth check is seven. Oh. <laughs> Second stealth check, a five. Excellent. Excellent. All according to plan. You are stealth. As you move into the hallway, um, it seems that part of the floor has given uh, has given way, leaving just a small sliver uh, along the edge uh, by which you'll need to maneuver. This will require a dexterity check. I will okay. also let you roll a... Uh, was it a... Uh, acrobatics, if you prefer. Or if you can think of any other way to get across this thing, that is uh, entirely up to you, of course. I was going to say either that or athletics. Yeah, you could use athletics, of course. You could. Uh, yeah, I, what I'm going to do is uh, athletics, because I get advantage on those types of rolls. So I will attempt to leap across. Bam. And bam. All right. So, all right. Second one was a 23. All right. You nailed that. And as you do, you notice that there is a Duragar uh, ahead. He seems to be uh, preoccupied uh, with his conversation that you can now hear pretty fully. All right. I can just get there with my movement. As you do, the conversation hushes. Did you hear that? Whoa. Oh, I didn't hear anything. Oh, probably just the wind. Let's keep moving. We uh, start to sort of walk uh, toward the, uh, the hallway here. And one says, our business is concluded here the portal was destroyed so what happens now we go get our money that's what pipe down you idiot we're off to Boonavar next we still have more to do oh do we have to very, very much. much hate the rain if we don't finish the job the boss is going to be angry that's right so quit you're belly aching. Fine. But don't go blaming me when we all catch cold. We just need to deliver the pendant. We don't even have to enter the city. It'll be fine. But what about the disease? It's spread almost overnight, and most people are already infected. 
We're not contacting anyone on the inside. We'll be fine. And they continue to walk down the hall. Mm, that's a lot of information. Uh, all right, I'm I'm just gonna hold here. Wait for, wait for the rest of them to catch up. Ian Fear, you're up. second um all right yeah i'm gonna try following down that path on the right hand side 15 20 oh. huh everything all right, all right? 20 right, you see the same thing the floor here seems to have given away uh, or given way there is a large crack leaving just a sliver along the side uh by which you can possibly maneuver. I'm going to try to see if I can tiptoe across uh, to get behind Wreck. All right. Go ahead and roll it. All right. Oh! Moving across the side of the pit, you can't help but sort of look down uh, into this thing, and that vertigo sort of takes you of this, this complete darkness down there. You lose your footing and you slip and fall into a hole. That's actually only about six feet. You think you could pull yourself back out, but you do take a 1d4 damage. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and roll that. And you know what? I'm actually going to roll that here in... Because I don't know how I would do a public roll in... Uh, like a DM roll. I wonder, can I do it in the game log, perhaps? Yep. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure how I can actually do like a DM public roll, but... Um, let me go ahead and do that here in um, so we're gonna do like 1d um call oh, 1d oh, 1d6 that worked out pretty well um not sure why it says Duragar there but <laughs> that is uh five damage hmm that was supposed to be a d4 but it was supposed I, to be I a d4 Oh. Okay. You fell. You fell six feet. And took five damage. Ian, fear you're currently, um, well, in a pit. About up to uh, how tall are you? Uh, six foot. So yeah, it's about just up to the top of your head. Uh, so from behind you, Wreck, you hear this like, whoop, thunk. <laughs> All right, Wreck right, will, uh, <laughs> uh, I guess on my turn, I'll, I'll walk back and attempt to reach down and pull him out. Okay. Val moves on. Tess, you're up. There's a wall in me way. Okay, I gotta move. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm trying here. Yeah, this is a remake of an older um, map that we were using before, and I remade it um, for this uh, for this scene. I hope you like it. Yeah, uh, but it is a little bit weird. <laughs> so, all right. Tess that's... follows behind. She sees that Ian Fear is now missing, and she panics for a moment and turns to Serene and says, uh, "Where did, where did Infear go?" 
That's the end of my turn. Can Serene oh, whisper back real quick? Serene can whisper back, of course. Okay, so I can't really see, so she's going to say, I don't know, I just heard a thump. And that's it. <laughs> whoop. Oh, oh, oh. Whoop. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> ah! <laughs> what, what, Looney Tunes what, kind of fall like <laughs> Looney Tunes falling down the side of a cliff yeah. <laughs> you, you probably he, he pauses for a moment in the air a giant penguin <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, but, like, you probably did say out loud as you were as you were like trying to you know uh, like like move along the ledge you're like oh let me just squeeze by you there <laughs> That brings us back to Serene. You're you're up. Okay, so I'm just gonna move up. I can't really see much, so we're just gonna go for it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Let me move you into a good spot. There. Yeah. Right. All right. So around, so around this corner, uh, you can actually make out. Um, I believe that you have you passed by this in the in the previous time that you were here, but there's a small, um, um, looks to be an uncovered pit trap, um, just kind of out in the open. You actually uh, shouldn't have a problem just flying over this one. I laugh in the face of danger, <laughs> <laughs> and that's my turn. <laughs> Wreck. All right, Rex walks back to the hole, reaches down. <laughs> You're right. Help! I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> All right. Um, what do you want me to use to pull him out? Just strength check. Yeah, just a strength check will do. All right. Advantage on that. Uh, looks like thirteen. You just kind of easily hoist him out. Um, okay. I imagine him like you. giving him an uppy, like he like, you want uppies? And he's, and he's <laughs> like, like, he lifts up in, in fear and in fear, like arms in the air, like uppies. His hands. <laughs> uppies. <All right. laughs> uh, is that can is that going to be my action for the turn? Yep, that's going to be your action. You, um, so it's kind of like, like um, you remember in Star Trek when Data like picks up, um. Wes like out of the water and just like one handed like whoop <laughs> it's like that easy okay. I'm like alright I'm moving forward and then I make my way down a little further <laughs> seems that the uh, the Dorgar are gone um, okay as far as you can see down the tunnel uh, this seems to be a pretty long hallway But at, this, at current, that is about all you can make out. Okay. i halt there, then. All right. Ian Fear, your turn. You have been hoisted. All right. Well, now that I am out of the hole, let's, uh, let's keep moving forward, then. Oh, there we go. Tess would kind of gasp after seeing Ian Fear pop out of this hole and be like, oh, that's where Ian Fear is. And then fell down the hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Huh. Okay. Five, ten, fifteen. Fifteen. Twenty, twenty five, thirty. Uh. Gonna be my action for now. All right. All right. Having heard the scuffle, Val's gonna actually drop stealth, take off around the corner, 
and uh, he's going to make that athletics check to jump over uh, this pit. So here we go. Rolling in athletics. That is a 21. He easily just jaunts right over to the other side. All right, that brings us to Tess. Tess, you just watch Valphalen kind of rush past you and hop over this pit. He lands with like a clattering of his armor. It's loud echoes. You all hear it. Mm. I'm just trying to see how I want to do this. Um, I'm going to roll acrobatics to see if Tess can jump over the hole using her quarterstaff as kind of like a, a vaulting pole. Oh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> acrobatics check. Um... Since you're using your staff as well, I'm going to go ahead and add two to that. And we're going to call that a pass. So um, you are able to vault over the um, over the pit. Okay. With a running start, uh, yep. Tess runs and hops all the way over the hole using her quarter staff, trying Not to failing. avoid the same mistake that Ian Fear made. While Phelan kind of presses up against the wall, allowing you to pass. You do. He turns to Val and gives a slight bow and says, uh, Thank you, Val. Of course. Well done. Well, thank you. Right. That brings us to... Back to Serene. All right, so Serene is just going to move forward not caring about the little spikies because she can just flit her on by. You just kind of fly over them. And you know what? She's going to kind of laugh. She's going to give a little like a little <laughs> I don't know what a fairy laugh would sound like but that's what I'm going for. But a little <laughs> <laughs> um, and just kind of laugh over that and jingle her way on over. All right. You easily make it over the spikes because you are in flight. And that's my turn. Wreck, you're up. All right, as uh, as people are getting closer in here, I'm going to kind of look over at Ian Fear and look back and everybody and be like, so I, I saw three Durgar moving forward down the tunnel. I don't see them anymore, but they seem to be talking about some kind of disease or some kind of business deal they were having with a pendant and um didn't make a whole lot of sense to me disease oh Tess is so tired of seeing Durgar hmm Tess Val looks uh, very concerned at the mention of a disease how do you think that you know what they're doing? Mm. I don't, and I prefer n not to speculate, but when, when we crossed before into the other time and plane, did they not mention a disease that had spread all across Siuk? And then across the world. Oh, Tess does remember that. Perhaps they're trying to do it that here? Hmm. Pure speculation. And furthermore, these dwarves must have come from a portal. They could not be the same ones that that would have no, that it doesn't connect. That wouldn't make sense. Did they say where they were going? Tess looks direct. 
uh, like it sounded like they were going to a town or a city, but not going directly in. Like they were making contact with somebody. Hmm. Mm. Unover, likely. It's close. We should head there. And one of the bigger cities. Tess agrees. We go to Bunaver. I wonder... I wonder if the caravan made it back by now. I suppose we'll find out. Shall we head to the exit and go to Bunaver? I believe so. The exit is just beyond here. All right, Rec. Okay, uh, Rec will go ahead and continue with his movement then. As you make your way up the hall, um, mm -hmm. you see a very faint light uh, coming from a small hallway off to the right. Okay. Further up, some stairs uh, lead up to um, what appears to be the outside, although it seems like it's a little dark out there. All right. Uh, that's going to end my movement there. And uh, yeah, I'll wait. wait. You're out. All right. Well, let's go ahead and start moving. In fair, you see the same light coming from the. Um, the hallway off to the right. You remember this as being that um, that one room with the countdown puzzle. Right. Um... Well, I think after hearing uh, about Durgar being ahead, uh, I'm... Yeah, no, I think I'm actually going to stick back here trying to dash for so I think that's going to be the end of my turn. Very wise. Now, Phelan? He just kind of walks um, past you. Tess. <clears throat> and Tess is going to Quietly follow, not stealthily, but just kind of quietly as, follow behind. As you uh, as you start walking, Val hangs back and and walks alongside you. Um, he says, um, "I'm worried about the state of things beyond the entrance of the tunnel." S is with you there. I hope that everyone is safe. Oh, we won't know, unfortunately, until we get there. Serene, you're up. You can hear them conversing, everyone. Okay. So... Let me... Move over real quick. Okay. And then kind of go not too far ahead, but just in front of uh, Tess, kind of like in the middle between them, just to stay safe. She has learned her lesson on uh, bounding through. Um, so that is <laughs> going to be her turn. <laughs> Wreck Bloodstone, did they mention any details about this disease that you could hear um it was a lot for me to take in uh what you were saying so i don't quite remember enough to 
give enough detail. That's fair. Um, from what you can remember, uh, let's see, they didn't. They only mentioned it once, mm -hmm. um, and they did mention that it spread almost overnight. That's about all you've got. Okay. Uh, well, I, I, I give him that little bit. It seems that the Durgar are not the ones responsible for spreading the disease. All sounds weird to me. Perhaps this is all one big conspiracy plan. This boat's ill. Don't like it. Wreck, we, uh, during the course of our adventures, found ourselves in a strange place with flying machines and strange ranged weapons that propel small metallic objects. But in meeting some of the folk there, we learned that we had been sent out of time into a different plane. <clears throat> where we were told of a, of a disease that had spread across all the world. The people of that plane had begun to round up all of the magic users and slaughter them, and a war ensued. I am hoping that we are not looking at the beginning of these same events. <clears throat> and if so, we'll have to figure out what we can do to stop it. You're not making the most sense to me, but I'll, I'll help however I can. Thank you. Let's move on. All right. Um, that was whose turn did we end on? Uh, I think we ended on Serene's turn, was it? Yeah. Rack, you're up. All right. Go ahead and move up to this point. Look in. As you, as you turn the corner here. There is a fixture in the center of the room. Um, it is a, a sort of bowl sitting upon a a large a large bowl, around uh, six feet wide, um, sitting upon a um, large marble slab. Suspended above the bowl is a large crystal formation, glowing and emitting light. Beyond it and on the wall in the back is a big, final-looking button. Turning around behind you, you see a, um, well, a very strange kind of fixture. It looks like, um, hmm, some kind of strange sundial, perhaps. Um, inscribed around it are numbers and, uh, a single pointer. Uh, points currently at the number zero. Uh, numbers count all the way up to 20, going well, clockwise around it. I don't know any sundials go to 20. All right, he'll, he'll take two more steps in just to look around the room a little bit more, see if he sees anything else. In fear, you start to see Wreck proceed into the room with the... Well, with the puzzle from before. Mm -hmm. uh, along the sides of the room, there are four pillars. Um, they don't see, they don't appear to be of any import. Um, but yes, the, um, the main attractions in this room, I suppose, are the uh, crystal formation and the large button on the wall. 
All right. Uh, I, I just wait for everyone to catch up. All right. Ian Fear, you're up. All right, so first we're going to start moving down. About 30, and then see. Uh, Ian will sort of uh, try to call out to Rick and say, uh, I wouldn't bother messing with that button at the end. It locked the gates on us until the countdown. There was a countdown. And then afterwards, the gate just opened up again. Oh, some kind of trap. Sort of. But an annoying one. All right. And with the it, my turn. with the final room of this um, of this area explored, does anyone else have business here? I mean, I think our primary goal now is going to try to be to get back to Boon Yeah, we're just trying to book book it out. All right. <laughs> and so, you. Uh, well, let me actually cut back to this map here. That should have changed the map for everyone. Yep. Uh -huh. All right, everybody. So you guys make your way out of this tunnel. And as you approach the stairs at the end, you can hear the sound of rain um, falling um, and hitting the ground and the stone uh, around the entrance. Uh, you leave, and it doesn't take you long to find the road heading north to Bunavar. You proceed down the road, <clears throat> and after a time, you come across uh, what looks to be a wagon with several... Um, one moment. Several humanoid-looking figures uh, surrounding it. Can I get a marching order for this? I'll go ahead and lead. Unless this somebody is going to take up the take rear the like she usually does. Serene will be somewhere in the middle. Yeah, same here. Uh, Val, uh, Val actually chooses to walk next to you, Rick. Artemis. He sort of... Um, he sort of probes you about the uh, conversation that you overheard with... Um, several other questions. You give him all the details that you can. Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and activate this map here. So you guys come across. That's really. I hope that's showing up for everybody. The rain is. I'm seeing. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that is cool. So you guys come across a. Uh, what looks to be a broken down wagon, um, and perhaps currently under attack by a huge horde of these lurched and and uh, um, sort of uh, what, what's the term I'm looking for? Maybe hobbling um, humanoids. Oh, there's a lot of them. I was like, I don't see them, and then I scrolled out, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> As you, uh, as you approach, they see you coming down the road, and one of them lets out a groan. Ooh. Everybody roll in a knit. <laughs> Yet another in it. Uh, Rex on a 13. <clears throat> Just got 16. All right, I am, uh, Bear with me for just a moment. I am setting up the combat tracker now. I think I did it right this time. Yeah, I can see your roll. Yeah, I see okay, yours. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Hopefully it takes. Cool, cool. I, I'm not sure how the combat tracker in this works yet, but we're getting there. All right. So one moment, please. All right. We are running the encounter. Ah, the initiative rolls aren't there. Uh, give me one moment here. Let me grab the game log. I will just manually input them. Let me 
go ahead and roll. Where is this initiative? <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, seems like everybody is. So is that going to, like, auto? I has got 13. Um, Rec, what am I looking at with you? Uh, 13 on Rec. 13 on Rec. Okay. Ian Fear? You, 6. Tess? 16. Yeah. Mm. Fourteen. All right. Let's start this thing up. Okay, it's got a turn tracker in there. I don't actually have to uh, have to keep track of it. I guess. All right, go ahead. Um, Tess, you're up. Tess is going to take a few steps forward ahead of everyone and survey these humanoids to see if she can tell what they are. Uh, oh, they are definitely uh, zombies. <laughs> you can tell uh, so a couple of them have turned to face you. Um, they're sort of lurching toward you. Um, there are even more that appear to be uh, kind of crouched over um, sort of these bloody messes. Okay. Give me just a moment here to look through my spells, if you don't mind. Yeah, no problem. Take your time. Okay, um, her, her her eyes will light up a bit with excitement and she'll turn to everyone and she'll be like, Oh, it looks like they're all undead. Future babies. Um, I'm not going to take an action here because I think I might be missing one of my spells. What spell? Should be turn undead. Give me just a moment here. I'm going to check roll 20. Because it was a spell that was like... It was in... It was there for like, um... Undead within a certain feet of me will be compelled to turn away or run away from me. And like I had that in the last campaign and I'm not finding it right now. Channel divinity, turn undead is an action, not a spell. Oh. In this, in this case. Where is that action at? Oh, it's under actions. Undead. Are you within 30 feet of the Okay, I'm not going Okay, I'm not going to activate that right now. It's just it's a plan since there are so many of them. Okay. Okay. I don't actually know how you can like link that into the chat or anything, but just saying it is going to be fine. I'm pretty sure I can just copy and paste it into the chat for everyone. That works. Whatever's clever. By the, uh, way, by the way, how's the music for everybody? Is it too loud? It's a little loud. Like it is a little loud. Okay. I went ahead and I've already tweaked it. If uh, on mine, go into the little uh, music note icon, and then I just tweak the volume levels there. Okay. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, everybody. All right, so Tess basically just gave gave everyone a heads up that they're all undead, or they appear to be undead, which could be a source of a bigger problem. Why does it say you have zero? Why does it say everybody has zero HP? I don't get that. What? 
Mine says 45 weird. out of 45 right now. Weird. weird. It might be a bug. Um, combat tracker is an alpha, so. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and open up Zombie A. Let's see. So then it's going to move. Upon seeing you, they, um, a few of them break off from the group and start to head toward you. <clears throat> I think it's just a, yeah, it was a group initiative, so we are... All right. So a few of them start heading your way. Serene, you're up next. All right. So Serene is just going to move forward a little bit. But not too far ahead. Giving herself a little bit further back. And that's going to be her turn. She doesn't want to burst into battle just yet. All right. Wreck, you're up. Wreck, on the other hand, is... <laughs> Go into a rage and will charge forward, drawing his spear and chunking it at uh, the guy, uh, I guess, middle right there. Um, so let's see. Measured out there. Takes off forward and hurls spear. 13 to hit. All right. That is a hit. Okay, damage. Nine on the guy just forward and to his right. Uh, so this one right here? Yeah. Cool. All right. Got a long list of stuff here. That was, what, 13? Nine damage? Yes, nine. All right. Let's see. Another 15. There we go. All right. Your spear sticks into that zombie who lights out sort of a hiss. <laughs> um, it seems to be about wounded. Okay. And then I'll just uh, take and start smacking my hammer on my shield to draw him in. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, as you do that, um, some of the zombies turn around and look up from what they're doing, and they start, you know, getting up to turn around toward you. Um, so success on that. And that's my turn. Alphalan's also charging in. All right, he doesn't have quite enough for an attack yet, but um, he rushes in at that zombie and stops to a stop there. In fear. All right. Let me see what I got about this real quick. All right.
Oh, Jesus. This thing mm -hmm. has quite the range. Oh, it does. Oh, yes. Yeah, li literally, for, well, so for this spell, from where I'm standing, I could literally hit every single Anything. one of these targets. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, I'm going to... Uh... So yeah, I'm going to channel a bit of energy, and I'm going to cast uh, Chaos Bolt. Uh, and then I'm going to spend a Sorcery Point, and using the uh, Metamagic Twin spell. Um, uh, so this would be, what I think this is a first level spell, so I guess I spend one point for it. Yeah. Uh, to okay. target a second creature in range with the same spell, as long as the spell uh, is, is it? as long as the spell at the level it's being cast is incapable of targeting more than one creature. So, okay. So so spending like I'm gonna cast Chaos Bolt at first level, targeting this guy right here, the one who's to the right. Uh, the one who is just struck by the spear and the one that's sort of behind him and to the left is for the second for the spell point okay so let's see oh i am not getting a lot of great rolls this is a two hit correct yes 14 hits Where's the... Oh, I see. Hang on. Can you show me which one that you're uh, targeting? I'm trying to select... Oh, that's why. Okay, so... Let me see if it shows... Can you click on it? I can see if, you click, if you're clicked on it. Oh, hang on. There we go. That's how I select targets. That one. And that okay. one. Okay. This one and this one. Okay. And then... Where is the... And they each take 10 points of, let's see which kind it is. Six and four. Uh, so both are taking 10 points? 10 points of force damage. Okay. One moment. Oh, this does make it easy. That's awesome. All right. Your bolts pelt these zombies who maintain their footing under the assault. And then... Any other actions? I'm, uh, and then I'm... Oh, hang on. Let me... All right. Then I'm just going to uh, move myself sort of uh, aside into the front of... Well, I'm going to put myself next to Tess... Uh, Actually, I'm going to put myself 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, uh, to the front, slightly to the front and beside uh, Serene. And then that'll be my turn. Excellent. And that brings us back to Tess. Hold on, sorry. I'm trying to figure out how to read. My spell, there it is, click it. <clears throat> One bonus action within 60. Wait, hold on. Oh. Casting time is one bonus action. Okay. Did that come up? I'm going to cast. Tess is going to cast Shield of Faith on Wreck. Shield of Faith on Wreck. 
There's a um, shimmering field appears and surrounds a creature of your choice within range, granting it a plus two bonus to AC for the duration. Duration is 10 minutes. Concentration. All right. So you have this. Uh, you have Shield of Faith on you, Rack. Add a two to your AC. Excellent. Side note, I really like how this actually automatically uses up my spell slots when I go ahead and cast. Isn't that, <laughs> Isn't awesome? that awesome? Yeah, that is. That's handy. I wish it showed it in the combat tracker, but that's okay. That is okay. Like I said, we uh, I will be working on how to get those rolls to post to the chat in Foundry uh, as well. So um, we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, excellent. Uh, any other actions, Tess? Um, it says that this was a bonus action, so does that mean that I can move forward? It says uh, casting time, but it says one bonus action, so... Yes, that means you still can move and take an action. Okay, so Tess is going to kind of close in. Um... We're just going to go ahead and uh, we're going to hold right here. Tess doesn't, she's not going to take any of your actions. We're just going to see how it goes. Okay. All right. Starting turns on our friends here. Rack one's going to step up to you. Okay. Swing at you. Like, good luck at this point. Step up, bro. <laughs> that is an 11. Miss. Right? Zombie Bravo starts to walk forward, and as you, as they do, you now can see that there is actually quite a bit of murder that has happened here. Familiar. Or do any of them look familiar? The undead. Um, many of them look recently deceased. Their flesh is not terribly rotted. Um, any and... sigils or anything that they're wearing that would tip off who they are? Uh, looks like there are a couple that <laughs> have sort of a fancier dress. Um, you notice that they are wearing pendants, but you can't make out what they are from this distance. Okay. Whoops, that was actually there. Less. Less. Sorry, I'm making a bunch of moves right now. <laughs> oh, you're good. Uh, oh, yes, and uh, all right, zombie. What, which zombie is this? Ah, yes, it's the E rolls an attack with advantage to hit on Val. Both are misses, or well, it's a miss. Whoops. Um, I did not mean to skip you, Serene. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> That's actually kind of hard to do. Cool, cool. All right. So Serene is just going to move forward and just attack this zombie, the one right next to her, with Acid Splash. And let's see if I can do this properly. Just click the little thing that says cast. Yeah, if you click on the spell, there should be a little button that says cast. Uh, 
And then... I think I did it. Yep, that is six damage. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, which one was that? Let's... The one right to her right. Right, right. All right, he is at death's door. And that's her turn. Wrecked Bloodstone, you're up. <clears throat> All right, then I'm going to go ahead and attack the one directly in front of me with a reckless attack. Uh, I'm going to forego my shield and do a two-handed swipe down on this guy since I'm now magically armored up. So, striking him. Advantage with the Reckless. Uh, 23 on the high one. Hit. All right. Two-handed swipe for 10 damage. Your Warhammer connects with its face. We are rolling a... Constitution saving throw. That zombie dies. Okay. I will go ahead, move up, and then strike at the one right in front of Val Phelan, the one I hit with my spear. <clears throat> this one. Um, cool. Go ahead and roll it. A second attack. It's not reckless. Uh, only a 12. All right. That is a hit. Oh, nice. All right. Two-handed swipe for 12 damage. Okay. 12 damage. All right. You hack into him with your warhammer, smashing him across the face. He reels back uh, and is very, very damaged. Uh, uh, he's a death door. I'm just kind of wailing, going to, going nuts on him, and in my turn. All right. Mm. Okay. That brings us to Val. All right, Val Phelan. See what we've got. All right, Val Phelan's going to swing with his long sword. That is a 12, which is a hit. Or seven damage. Zombie. Constitution save. Oof. So that zombie somehow remains standing. <clears throat> Not for long. Yep, he's taking another swing at him. The extra attack. Also a hit. Seven damage. Zombie. Passes it. Oh, wait. Is that a pass? That is, that is a pass. So he carves into that zombie a couple times, but somehow that zombie maintains its footing throughout his assault. Next up, we have Ian Fear. Ian Fear? All right, well, I had a look to see just how many of these things there are. And. Instead of piddling around with a couple at a time. Well, I mean, I guess in a way this is also piddling around with a couple at a time. Uh, you'll see uh, Ian Fear's sort of eyes sort of uh, glow a little bit. And the rocks around him are going to start to rise up in the air. Uh, as he's going to cast uh, 
Melf's Minute Meteors. And actually, did it? Let me see if it's got it in here. Yeah, it didn't link it in chat or anything. Huh. All right, give me a second. That's okay. So, um, so basically what happens is six sort of rocks or like, you know, basically five foot size or small rocks type things uh, rise up around and they're sort of circling around Ian Fear. And then uh, on cast, I can uh, I send one out. And <clears> for that, I'm going to send it towards the one that's next to Val Phelan here. And then subsequently, I can send up to two uh as a bonus action okay uh, on each on each of the rest of my turns all right so what is the uh how does it feel its damage Let's see oh so and it's too... toward a point actually i'm gonna send it streaking towards let me see what's the range on this thing each creature within five feet of the point where the meteor explodes must make a dexterity saving yeah. throw. A creature takes 2d6 fire damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. I have to see what the range is on this real quick. Uh... Range. 120 feet. You can hit pretty much anything on the map at this point, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to... Actually, in that case, I'm going to send it... Uh, like right here, uh, right between the, let me see if it'll, right between these guys. Uh, so like this. So in between those three, yeah. So like right here. Yeah. In the center there. Perfect. All right. Let me. And then <clears throat> it explodes for seven damage. One moment. Okay, so we have, let's see, that's zombie F, G, H, and I are all rolling. Dexterity saves, was it? I believe so. What is your dexter or your spell? Oh, your uh, spell save DC is 15, it's... so we got to pass a 15 uh, dexterity save, so here we go. Um, so let's see, we have one, two, three, four targets rolling right now. Okay, and this was F through I. All right, we've got pass, fail, pass, pass. So three pass. passes, one fail. Go ahead and roll damage. Yeah, so the total rolled was seven damage. Oh, okay, I see that there, seven damage. So they um, take half on a pass. Okay, so this would be so would be fail. All right, the explosion rocks a handful of these zombies. A few of them um are able to dodge, but still take minor damage. Uh, one of them is not able to make it out of the way in time and uh, and takes the full brunt of the blast. Uh, and these, and if it's relevant, it is fire damage. Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. That? Oh no! Okay, it's not yeah, what I thought that did. Here. Updating the tracker in here. Nice hit. Okay, can I get rid of that somehow? <clears throat> uh, 
Oh, I could have done it there. Okay, cool. Now I know that I can do that. Perfect. All right, that brings us back to Tess. Tess, you're up. Okay, hear me out. In my equipment, I have two, where are they? Two flask or tankard. Um, Tess usually keeps alcohol in them. That's what she got them mm -hmm. filled with last time. Um, can she take one of those flask and or tankards, tuck a piece of this wool cloth that she has into it, and then create essentially like a Molotov, a Molotov cocktail and throw it for yeah. fire yes. damage? Okay. Yes, she can. Sweet. <laughs> um, so she's doing this. She's like tucking the, uh, the wool cloth and dipping it into the alcohol, and she takes just a couple steps forward. Um, and then using her, do we have medieval Zippos in this one? Give me a second. Yes, yes you do. Okay, using her medieval Zippo, uh, tiny torch, she's going to light the wool cloth on fire, um, turn back to Ian Fear, wink at him, and say, Tess's mother taught her this one. And then she's going to yeet that Molotov cocktail as hard as she can. I'm assuming I need to roll something. Dexterity check. Dexterity check. Okay. So we're doing, we're rolling this as a, uh... I see saving throws. Oh, oh there's dexterity up there. Okay. There you go. There you go. Where, where were you <clears throat> aiming? I was aiming for, wait, is that Hang targeting? On a before you uh, determine what's going to happen, uh, I'm going to spend a sorcery point, and I'm going to add a d4 to that with my bend luck skill. Go ahead and roll it, Ian Fear. I'm aiming for this area right here, this like circle that uh, I just put down. I'm not sure if I can actually... I can do it. Yeah. I basically want to throw it toward the, the bigger crowd to see if I can cut them off. Okay. Um, yes, yes, you can. Uh, so that will explode with a, well, we'll call it five foot radius. Um, so basically the circle that you have there. Oops. Um, only up a little bit. I think you're, you're talking about this area, right? Hold, hold on. Where I put the circle at, essentially. Yeah, right. I don't so, see a way to make it bigger other than deleting it and then making it so like, like that. that. Right here. Yeah, like that. Okay delete mine oops sorry no you're, no you're fine uh, actually i deleted that uh, okay um i'm gonna have everybody roll a dexterity save um so this is gonna hit that very same group uh dexterity save this will be a dc we'll call it a dc 10. We'll do half damage. Yeah, this is just very minute, distracting fire damage. Just whatever we can to break up the crowd and provide some AOE damage. Okay, there we go. Let me take one of those tankards out of my list. So got three passes and a fail. That second zombie is really having a bad day. Um, so that once again is F through I. Um, go ahead and roll um, for damage. We're going to call it 1d6. This is the initial blast of um, of it hitting the ground and, and shattering and, and dousing these guys in flame. Small roll. 1d6, that's a 1 damage. So the only one taking damage in this case is going to be... Oh, right. That's what I would roll it later. Okay. All right. However, the one that failed the uh, roll is now burning. Cool. So unless he's able to put out his flames, which... Um, well, unless he's able to put out his flames, he will... Um, he will be taking burning damage every turn. All right. 
Uh, next up, Zombie A is dead. I don't know why he's still here. Zombie B is going to make an attack roll against Wreck. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, the, uh, the yeah, entire yeah, ground right. right there is going to be... Okay, so anyone who walks through it, they'll have to make that save to see if they can avoid being caught on fire. Let me go ahead and draw that out on the field, as a matter of fact. Okay. We're going to call that right here. Because with the alcohol on the ground, I just wanted it to burn for a little bit before it dissipates. Okay, so that's on the field. Um, that did that turn red for you guys as well? Yeah. Okay, so, that, so yes. that, that is the... That is the fire uh, currently. Uh, it will dissipate um, probably very quickly because we currently have, you know, rain. Um, but it should stay. Uh, it should stay burning for a little bit. You know, alcohol fire. Uh, cool. Uh, so incoming attack on you, uh, Rec. Seventeen. I believe that's a miss. Yes. We have an incoming attack at Val. Also a miss. Um, let's see. Zombies moving up. Zombies moving up. Mm. Was there something about reckless attack last time? What? Oh, they get advantage on me. Uh, yeah. Well, they just moved into place. Well, no. So the guy who attacked Wreck had yeah. advantage because he attacked recklessly. Oh, okay. Oh, so swing uh, at me again. <laughs> That's a miss anyway. Okay. Uh, one of the zombies marches straight through the fire. Um, this doesn't seem to really be thinking, I suppose, about that. <laughs> um, as it walks through, um, it is going to roll a dexterity to see if it catches on and is able to dodge before it catches a blaze, which it does, um, but it is still subject to the damage. So we're going to go ahead and roll that 1d6 for damage. That is 5 damage. zombie is that L all right another zombie straight through the flames it's like they don't even know they're there dexterity saving throw totally failed that that zombie is now burning and they are also taking a 1d6 worth of damage that is four damage All right, which zombie was that? Got 18. Oh, what? Ah, okay, the zombie R. All right. Uh, so, Rec, you're going to have two more attacks incoming. Okay, with advantage. That was a 13. Miss. One's a 17. Miss. Serene, you have uh, one attack incoming on you. Rolls a 22, which is a hit. Serena's hit for six damage. Ooh. Is that the one directly in front of her? 
Uh, yes, directly in front of her. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. And Valphalen is taking another two attacks. 15 is a miss. 16 is a miss. Oop, I did it again. Serene, you're up. Okay. All right. So Serene is just going to acid splash the one in front of her that just hit her. And let me do that. Aw. Missed a two. Acid splash damage. Uh, what's your spell save, DC? Um, eight, I think. Also, acid splash. Uh, you can also hit two creatures which are within five feet of each other. Did you read that? So the one, like, right behind him? The one that I just hit? Uh... Sure, you can do that. Okay. Yeah, so the one right behind him. Okay. Um, each for two damage, um, pending the uh, dexterity to save. So, doing so. One rolls a 15, the other an 11. Uh, what's your spell save, DC? It's 16. All right, both fail. Uh, that is two damage each. Let me go ahead and calculate that. Two damage each. Ah, oh, yes, and I almost forgot. Zombie B, two damage. And almost forgot, I'm going to go ahead and roll the other D6s for the two, uh, or the other D6 for the zombie that is on fire. He takes two damage. That was zombie G. So many zombies. All right. That brings us to Wreck Bloodstone. All right, Wreck turns uh, at the one that just hit Serene. I'm like, I you mange, you skin sack. Yeah, don't be hitting the little ones. <laughs> and, uh, and then he's going to reckless attack on it. So... I'd say it's a wreck full attack, really. So, 24 to hit. That is a hit. All right. Uh, nine damage. Nine damage. Is it still standing? Oh, it's still standing. All right. So, make my second attack on it. 16 to hit. Hit. And... 14 damage. 14 damage. Zombie. That is a fail. That zombie dies. All right. Okay. Rex just like, ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Yeah, go Rex. Trying, trying to draw in as much attention as he can. I guess that doesn't really matter. All right. Moving on. Uh, Val Phelan. Let's see. What do we have, Val Phelan? What do you have? What do you have these days? Can I draw that? Is that something I can do? Whoop. 
That is not what I meant to do. One moment. Much better, okay. That's what I meant to do. All okay. right, we have a Conal attack incoming from Valphalen, who um, exudes, <laughs> he breathes fire. fire out of his mouth uh, in a cone in front of him. So right next to you as well, um, Rack, you, you see him just kind of breathe fire all over the zombies that you see there. Um, let me see. So, that Rex, is... Rex just looks kind of surprised and. <laughs> DC 14 half damage on success, 2d6 fire damage. Uh, actually, I'm at sixth level, so this will be 3d6 fire damage. I don't think there's a nice way to. Oh, yes, there is. There it is right there. Uh, so, we need a uh, DC 14 dexterity save from every zombie affected. Go ahead and grab that. Zombie D, uh, D, J, I, <laughs> K, H. Uh, so starting with Zombie D, uh, there's a dexterity save for him. That is a pass. So that would be half damage, which would be five. That's nice. Constitution save from that very same zombie. Definitely a pass. He catches on fire and somehow is still trucking. That bastard. <laughs> um, all right. Zombie J. Uh, yeah, Zombie J. Dexterity save. There's a nine. That is a fail. He takes 10 damage. Zombie J. 10 damage. Boop. Do that here, too. Uh, who's this one? This is Zombie I. Dexterity save. It is an 8 fail. Takes 10 damage. Whoops. I mean to put the minus on there. Sitting at 9. What do we got? Zombie K. Whoops. Zombie K's dexterity save. 11 that is also a fail so he takes the 10 damage was that k i said yeah k 10 damage and zombie h dexterity save also a fail he takes 10 damage it's a nice hit All right, that concludes Val's attack. We're moving on to Ian Fear. Okay, well, uh, so Ian Fear is gonna lo look towards Tess and say, well, that was a neat little trick your mom showed you, but let me show you why I rock. And, <laughs> uh, so for the bonus action, we're gonna have two of the meteors come down. Uh, the first one is gonna land in this center area so uh can you can, um can you draw it with a ruler tool hang on uh so perfect and then uh so this is i think you said it was deck saves right Yes, dexterity uh, uh, saves. So each of them have to make a dexterity save, uh, or for the and this is the first one. Okay, so let's start there. Yeah. Uh, first one is going to be, let's see. Uh, what's the DC again? Uh, well, my, uh, I mean, it says they make a dexterity save. Uh, what's your spell save DC? Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. So. First one, uh, this is for Zombie R. It's a fail. Uh, go ahead, and the uh, damage is eight, correct? Yeah, eight fire damage. Eight fire damage. All right. 
Next zombie is zombie L. He's rolling that deck save. He rolls a 17, which is a pass, so he's going to take four damage. Which zombie did I say that was? L? Okay, next one. Zombie G. Dexterity save. It is a one. He takes the full eight damage. G. There you are. Hey, hey, hey. Zombie H. <laughs> Rolls a five, takes the full eight damage. That one is at death's door. Actually, there are two of them that are at death's door. Um, next up, we have zombie I. Once again, taking the fire damage. Rolls a five, fails the crap out of it. He's taken that full eight damage. Whoops, that was the wrong one. No, that was the right one, actually. That was zombie I, taking the full eight damage. There we go. Uh, let me see. Who else do we have here? Three more. Um, this is a good hit right there. This is Zombie F. Zombie F, dexterity save. He crits it. Uh, so he's taking only half damage. That is four damage on Zombie F. F in chat, folks. Hmm. Whoops. Okay, Zombie C. Finally taking a little bit of damage here. Dexterity save. Nope. Zombie C is going to take the full eight damage. Oops. Hey, okay, what? Dude, what is going on here? <laughs> there we go. Got it. Zombie J. Dexterity save. 15? Does that actually beat your spell save, DC? That matches yeah, it matches it. It matches it, so yes. Uh, so that is uh, four damage. What zombie was that? Zombie J. All right, that was a lot of damage. All right. Uh, Ian Fear? All right, so the second one comes down. Uh, I was going to say, should we just save the time, uh, uh, keep the rolls in for... Cause it is, but it is a second uh, meteor coming down. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to redo that one. So let's clear, the, uh, clear that and recalculate. Where are you sending it? Same place. Same place, so right here. Cool. Okay. Um, same folks. So yeah. Let me go ahead and start from the top again. This might wipe some out. Uh, negative one on the <laughs> on the dexterity roll on that one. Um, so that's zombie R. Uh, go ahead and roll damage. Oh, that was ten on that one. Um, oh wow. Uh, so, constitution save from him. That is a four. That zombie dies. All right, taking 10 damage. That zombie dies. Next zombie is zombie L. Dexterity save. He rolls a nine. That's not going to be good enough. He's taken that full 10 damage. Zombie L, 10 damage. Leaves him with six. 
So yeah, use that desk door. Couldn't tell. Uh, next up, we got Zombie G. Zombie G. Making that roll. Failed it. Taking 10 damage. And it needs to make that constitution save. 13 does not... Let's see. Yep, that is not going to be a pass. Zombie G taking 10 whole damage. And that zombie also dies. Whoop. What happened here? Oh, there it is. Haha. <laughs> There's so much going on. Okay. Uh, next up, we have Zombie H once again. Dexterity save. He fails it, taking the full 10 damage. Constitution saving throw. Which he nails. Somehow, Zombie H still standing after multiple attacks. This guy is crazy. Zombie I... <laughs> rolls a wow. one on his <laughs> rolls of one. Come on. Taking the full 10 damage. He rolls a five. That zombie dies. So he crumples to the ground and dies. Uh, let's see. Okay. Next zombie is zombie F. Zombie F does not succeed. He takes 10 damage. He's at death's door. Next zombie. Zombie C. There's so many of them. Rolls an 11, taking the full 10 damage. Zombie C. Leaves him with at death's door as well. You've just done a ton of damage right here in this one small spot. Zombie J, last zombie in the rotation. Does he take full damage? Oh, hell yeah, he does. 10 damage on Zombie J. Zombie J rolls a constitution save for undead fortitude. He rolls a 15, which is just enough to keep standing. Zombie J at one hit point. So, <clears throat> okay. So I have a question now. Yes. So these were his bonus actions, but the spell itself is a concentration. So if you cast anything else, the uh, the effect of that spell ends. All right. That's just what I want to make sure of. And then... Or if you get hit, or if you get hit, um, you'll uh, actually if you get hit, you have to roll a Constitution save to see if you can can uh, uh, continue concentrating. So. All right, all right, uh, and then just sort of be like, yeah, that's why I rock. And then, <laughs> uh, I guess I I will start uh, moving away a bit, see if I, I can draw the zombies towards me. Uh, where am I? Oh, that's why. Uh, well. We'll move to like right here. All right. And, and that'll be my turn. All right. The turn then goes to Tess. Tess will shout back to Ian Fear with amazement and be like, Ian Fear, you're amazing. You do rock. And then we are going to, I'm going to have to copy and paste it because it's kind of a, kind of a text to, uh, read through but basically the undead are gonna have to make um wisdom saving throws says dc 13. it's an action you present your holy symbol and speak a prayer that is so cool each undead yeah i see three. that the creature fails saving throw turn for one minute until it takes any damage a turned creature must spend its turns trying to move as far away from you as it can it can't willingly move to a space within 30 feet of you it can't take reactions for its action that is crazy okay 
Okay, um, so Tess is going to reach into her bag and she's going to pull out her mother's skull that has a painted symbol of Kelimvor on it. This is her holy symbol. The the holy symbol, the, the painting on the skull, basically is a skeleton hand that's like holding up two scales. <laughs> Can you see me doing that? Doing what? Okay, okay not yet then. But it should hit them within a 30 feet radius, so it should be the majority of these dudes um, in this whole pile here. The ones that aren't already dead, or re-dead, rather. Yeah, yeah it should hit. It, I don't know why I didn't highlight them, but it should hit the two right there, but maybe not the one that's right next to them. Um, so I think that's that's going to start the 35-foot part. Um, cool. That's... uh. So let's see how many saving throws we have. We have, uh, well, actually, you know what? I'm going to go in order just because it makes it easier on me. Uh, so we're going to start with Zombie L making a saving throw. Zombie L. Uh, I'm sorry, what kind of saving throw? It's a wisdom saving yeah, throw. Yeah, it's wisdom. It says DC 13. All right. Wisdom saving throw. That one is, so it's feared, is it? Yeah, they, they basically, they are for, are forced to kind of, like, turn around, and they try to move as far away from Tess as possible. They, and also, Undead can't move um, within 30 feet of me. So if they're within 30 feet of Tess, they will try to run away. Okay, let me find the uh, the thing for turned on it so I know how to mark it. Burning, frozen, shock. So they'll corroding. they'll turn away for one minute until they take damage, and then they'll turn back around. And I'm assuming it's broken. And if I remember correctly, I believe uh, one turn of combat actually takes place during one second, or it might be like two seconds or something. If I have that incorrect. Okay, so I'm just gonna mark them as feared because I don't see one for turned. First blast, holy shield, magic shield, ice shield, fire shield. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't see one for turned, so I'm gonna go ahead and just mark them as being afraid. That will clue me in on what to do. Um, okay, let's see. So next up we have zombie. So let's see. Oh, it was a wisdom saving. Wisdom save. Totally fails it. Marking that one too. Afraid. Okay, let's move on. Wisdom saving throw. 17, I believe that's a pass. Yeah, DC 13. Okay, next up, wisdom saving throw. Seven, that's a fail. Wisdom saving throw. Eight, that's a fail. Doing terrible at this, aren't they? They will rue the day that they crossed blades with Tess. <laughs> and friends. Eight, that's a fail. Fear me. Four. Zero. This is great. Wow. Is it eight? <laughs> so they're all like, ah! <laughs> yeah, you, you have, you have almost entirely cleared the field here. That one's a pass. The last one. Uh, right, last one. Yep, that was the last one. Oh, oh wow. wow. Well played. The last one is well an atheist. Well played. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not afraid of your holy mom. All right. All right. 
Zombies, many dead, many afraid. You guys start to see these zombies begin to dispel and take off running away from you. Um, actually, that starts the turn for the zombies, so we're going to go ahead and throw those calcula calculations in. They're taking the dash action. <clears throat> Whoops. There we go. to say if they're running away would that technically provoke attack of opportunities if someone wanted to take him yes yep should at um, least and val is going to take those uh wreck you have i believe one right now uh but you'll be you'll be making looks like in total four uh let's go ahead and start rolling those actually uh so uh, before things get too hectic uh go ahead and roll uh your attack of opportunity wreck 16. 16. That's a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. No running away. 10. 10 damage. <laughs> Zombie constitution save. Not going to be enough. That zombie dies. Uh, so actually, he probably got about there before he passed back on to the grave. Redead. Uh, yep, redead. Okay. Uh, Val Phelan is going to take one attack of opportunity against. That was that was a damage roll. Why was that? That's still a damage roll. That's the one. Thirteen. That's a hit. Damage. Seven. There we go. <laughs> Zombie. Uh, that one was this one right here. With the seven damage. Uh, this other one's going to also run off. Ten. So, Wreck, uh, go ahead and roll another attack of opportunity. And as is Val Phelan. Ooh, 26 to hit. That is a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Another 10. Another 10 and 9. Constitution save. Didn't matter. First one failed. He's dead. Boom. Nice. All right, we have another one attempting to get away. A wreck. We'll go ahead and roll another attack of opportunity. In the team. That is a hit. And nine damage. Nine damage. That is. Uh, he's down. He's dead. So let me grab everybody that actually just died. Zombie D, he's dead. This one is Zombie C. Dead. Go ahead and roll another attack of opportunity. Wreck. 16. Hit. 9 damage. That one actually passes. Uh, so he gets away with one hit point. Zombie F. One hit. Takes two damage off of that. You cowards! Would he also then stop being um, turned then because he took damage? Yeah, once they yep. once they take damage, they stop trying to run away from Tess. Oh, shoot. okay. 
Uh, well, he he would have had to have started running anyway. Yeah, he would have made it probably a short distance, and then once he gets hit, he'll stop and turn around like, what? You want smoke? Uh, okay. Okay, running. And I think I have cleared everything. Let me just double check. Zombie E. Zombie E took damage, I believe, so we're going to unturn. Yep. Some of these zombies are just barely hanging on by a thread. All right, Rec, you've got zombies starting to pile around you. All right. So that is all the time that we've got for today. We'll find out what happens next time. And I hope that you all join us for the next episode of New Delancia, which will be taking place on uh, next Sunday, as usual, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Time. Uh, also, be sure to join us for Deep Space Transmissions on this very Twitch channel, uh, Elite Dangerous. That takes place Saturdays from 6 to 9 p.m. Uh, make sure to check the uh, the chat down below. I mean, the uh, the uh, About panel down below for more information on that. Um, other than that, as always, uh, I am VG Punks, your most humble DM, and uh, I'm signing off. Keep a song in your heart. Bye.